As most of us know, Formula One has 10 competing teams, each with two drivers turning out in each race. But it hasn't always been that way and might not be going forward. Teams have expressed concerns of new entries to the F1 grid recently, but why? Today we're going to look at what these concerns are, amongst other things, so don't go anywhere. First up, where did it all begin? The sport's debut season, 1950, saw 18 teams compete, but due to high costs, many dropped out quickly. In fact, such was the lack of of competitive cars for much of the first decade of Formula One, that Formula Two cars were admitted to fill the space on the grid. Can you imagine that today? You probably won't be surprised to learn that Ferrari is the oldest Formula One team, the only still active team which competed in 1950. Early manufacturer involvement came in the form of a factory team, or works team, that is, one owned and staffed by a major car company such as those of Alfa Romeo, Ferrari, or Renault. After having virtually disappeared by the early 1980s, factory teams made a comeback in the 1990s and 2000s and formed up to half the grid with Ferrari, Jaguar, BMW, Renault, Toyota, and Honda either setting up their own teams or buying out existing ones. Mercedes-Benz owned 40% of the McLaren team and manufactured the team's engines. Factory teams make up the top competitive teams. In 2008, fully owned factory teams took four of the top five positions in the Constructors' Championship, with McLaren being the other. Ferrari holds the record for having won the most constructors championships with 16, a pretty impressive haul with people like Michael Schumacher being responsible for a lot of those wins. However, by the end of the 2000s, factory teams were once again on the decline, with only Ferrari, Mercedes-Benz, and Renault lodging entries to the 2010 championship. Companies such as Climax, Repco, Cosworth, Hart, Judd, and Supertech, which had no direct team affiliation, often sold engines to teams that could not afford to manufacture them. In the early years, independently owned Formula One teams sometimes also built their engines, though this became less common with the increased involvement of major car manufacturers such as BMW, Ferrari, Honda, Mercedes-Benz, Renault, and Toyota, whose large budgets rendered privately built engines less competitive, unfortunately. Cosworth was the last independent engine supplier. Beginning in 2007, the manufacturer's deep pockets and engineering ability took over, eliminating the last of the independent engine manufacturers. It is estimated the major teams spend between 100 and 200 euro million, 125 to 225 million dollars per year per manufacturer on engines alone. A hefty sum indeed. When did you start watching F1 and which teams do you follow? So why are the current teams weary of new additions? The desire for more teams in Formula One must be weighed against the impact their addition would have to the current grid. That's the opinion of current Alpine executive director Marcin Budkowski and Ferrari racing director Laurent Mekis. Formula One is currently experiencing something of a logjam when it comes to drivers looking to join the field. The seat alongside Valtteri Bottas at Alfa Romeo Sauber remains the only one as yet confirmed for the 2022 championship. At least three drivers are in the frame for the drive, including Antonio Giovinazzi and Alpine Academy members Oscar Piastra and Guan Yu Zhao. The latter is the front runner, a Formula Two race winner. Zhao also has significant back from his homeland. Ferrari junior Caleb Law was a candidate before electing to switch focus to IndyCar for next season. Who do you think the drive will go to next year? Of the 20 seats of the 2022 grid, at least 19 of them will be filled by drivers with at least one year of F1 experience. It's a problem which has seen leading figures such as Mercedes boss Toto Wolff and Red Bull's Christian Horner think more teams are probably needed. They're probably correct, but there are obviously cannot be too many cars on the track for safety purposes. Mercedes has Formula E world champion Nick DeVries waiting in the wings, while Red Bull has had to all but cut ties with Alex Albon in order for the Thai licensed driver to join Mercedes-powered Williams. F1 operates what is effectively a franchise system, with limited spaces available for new teams and a $200 million anti-delusion fee payable for the privilege of entering the fray. It'd be good to have more teams in Formula 1, I think we would all welcome that, remarked Budkowski, but they need to be the right teams and they need to bring value to this sport and I think that's one of the reasons that the anti-delusion fee was brought in to make sure that people who come are really financially sound and solid to be able to run a Formula One team which is a very expensive business to run. Do you agree with that assessment? He added that equally it was also a way to ensure that when the Concord agreements were negotiated that all the teams would be reassured that the cake wouldn't be split more slices with newcomers entering the sport in an uncontrolled manner. It was a measure that was mostly brought 
want to give confidence to the existing 10 teams that they would be looked after if there were new teams coming. With the pipe being so big, is this simply a matter of greed? Let us know below. F1 teams receive prize money payments from the sports commercial rights holder Liberty Media. Historically, the payment structure is awarded the top 10 teams in the championship based on two columns of payments relating to performance over the most recent and last three seasons, respectively. While the sports financial practices have changed in recent years, the addition of new teams would reduce the slice of pie available to all. So naturally, the existing teams probably don't like the idea of splitting money with more teams, given how expensive the sport can be. Should that fee be scrapped then? Maybe that's more of a question for Stefano Domencali, F1 CEO in that case. Or maybe there are needs to be more regulations from an outside body, as obviously the teams currently involved are not going to vote to scrap it. Also, more teams would bring more diversity to the sport and bring more drivers in the sport for sure. We think it's a better outcome than having three cars per team, as has been mooted by some other people in the recent past. As recently as 2012, F1 had a grid of 24 cars, could have been 26 had the US F1 team got off the ground. Seems a little crowded. The additional teams, Virgin Racing, Lotus Racing, and Hispania Racing team entered this sport in 2010 under the notion of cost cap regulations, which never materialized. None of the operations now exist, but demand for places on the grid has remained strong. The anti-dilution fee was designed to keep opportunists and unqualified teams from entering the sport, not keep talented youngsters on the sidelines. Again, we think this might be seen as a little elitist. What do you think? Ultimately, we still want the 20 best drivers to be on the grid, and what we need to come up with as a group is to find a way to give a chance to the young guys that are coming to be able to demonstrate whether they're a part of the top 20, suggested Laurent Mikes of Scuderia Ferrari. I don't think it's much of a matter of making it a top 22 or 24 or 26 or whatever, but it is a matter to have the opportunity to have the testing opportunities to make sure that we don't miss in one of these young drivers coming up, a guy or a young woman that's potentially within these 20 best drivers in the world. Ironically, financial regulations have this year come into effect, leading McLaren Zach Brown to suggest that it could see the value of teams rise into the billion dollar range. Brown argues that it'll be possible for teams to run at a profit, making them a viable business in a traditional sense. It's possible to therefore imagine a time when teams rely less on F1's prize money payments for survival and more to add to their bottom dollar. It's at that point at which the argument for F1 being able to sustain more teams and the necessity of the anti-delusion fee changes. Let us know what you think about the whole thing below. What do you think of all that then? As we've discussed, Formula One has a $200 million anti-delusion fee mandated for any team wanting to join the sport. As per the Concord Agreement, the large sum is proving to be a hindrance for prospects to join F1. As we mentioned earlier, the fee seems to be a little elitist. We are all for new teams joining to give more competition to a sport which is usually dominated by just a few teams. We also see these types of things happen in other sports. For example, football, soccer, is dominated by only a handful of clubs who are able to buy the best, most expensive players. PSG in Manchester City, for example. As always, please feel free to leave your own thoughts and opinions in the comment section below if you have any feelings about what we've discussed today. And also remember to tune in next time.